This is in continuation of the fairy tale unit, and this is Jack and the Beanstalk. It's retold and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg, and I totally recommend this book. It is just, the art is amazing. All right, let's read. Look at this picture. Look, it's almost scary. Oh my. Jack and the Beanstalk can be a scary book. There once upon a time, there was once upon a time, a poor widow who had an only son named Jack and a cow named Millie White. And all they had to live on was the milk the cow gave every morning, which they carried to the market and sold. But one morning, Milky White gave no milk, and they didn't know what to do. Cheer up, mother. I'll go and get work somewhere, said Jack. We've tried that before, and nobody would take you, cried his mother. We must sell my Milky White, and with the money, start shop or something. So they're going to use the money for the cow to maybe open a market of their own. On his way to market, Jack met a funny-looking old man. Well, good morning, Jack, said he. How do you know his name? Good morning to you, said Jack, and wondered how the man knew his name. Can you tell me how many beans make five, said the man. Two in each hand and one in your mouth, said Jack, sharp as a needle. Right, said the man, and as you are such a bright lad, I don't mind doing a swap with you. Your cow for these beans. Go along, said Jack. Ah, but these are magical beans, said the man. If you plant them tonight by morning, they grow right up to the sky. Really, said Jack. Yes, and it doesn't turn out to be true. If it doesn't turn out to be true, you can have your cow back. Well, is that okay? Is that okay for him to do that? Back already, Jack, said his mother. Tell me, how much did you get for Milky White? You'll never guess, mother. Could it be five pounds for ten, fifteen? No, she cried. It can't be 20. I knew you wouldn't guess. What do you say to these magical beans? Plant them tonight and... What? said Jack's mother. Have you been such a dolt? Dolt means stupid, okay, boy. Such an idiot, oh, there it is, as to give away my Milky White, the best milker in the parish, for a set of paltry beans. Paltry means nothing, not worth anything off with you to bed and as for your precious beans here they go out the window and she threw them out she's kind of a kind of a mad mom huh so jack went upstairs to the little to his little room in the attic and sad and sorry he was to be sure as much for his mother's sake as for the loss of his supper at last he dropped off to sleep but what's happening what's happening they need milky white they are magical aren't they when Jack woke up, he saw that the beans had sprung up into a big beanstalk that went up and up and up till it reached the sky. So the old man spoke the truth after all. Jack gave a jump onto the beanstalk and he climbed 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 and he climbed, and he climbed till at last he reached the top. Would you be so brave to just climb way up high in the sky? I wouldn't, <laughs> no way. Jack walked along, and he walked along, and he walked along till he came to a great big tall house. And on the doorstep was a great big tall woman. Yeah, she's pretty tall. Good morning, Mom, said Jack. Could you be so kind as to give me some breakfast? It's breakfast you want. Is it, said the great big tall woman. It's breakfast you'll be if you don't move on. My man is an ogre. And there's nothing he likes better than broiled boys on toast. Scary. Oh, please, Mom, cried Jack. I've had nothing to eat since yesterday morning. Really and truly, Mom, I may as well be broiled as die of hunger. <laughs> he was hungry, wasn't he? You ever been that hungry? Well, the ogre's wife was not half so bad after all. She took Jack into the kitchen and gave him some bread and cheese. When all of a sudden, thump! The whole house began to tremble with the noise of someone coming.
goodness gracious me, said the ogre's wife. Come along, quick. And she bundled Jack into the oven just as the ogre came in. I wouldn't want to go to the oven, would you? <laughs> Reminds me of Hansel and Gretel, right? He was a big one to be sure. Ah, wife, he said. What's this I smell? Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead. I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Ooh, scary. And he's hearing it. Nonsense, dear, said his wife. You're dreaming. Or perhaps you smell the scraps of that boy you liked so much for yesterday's dinner. Oh, dear. Here, you go and have a wash and tidy up. And by the time you come back, those calves will be broiled for your breakfast. Calves are baby cows. So he's eating more than one. Oh my goodness, he's a big one. Well, the ogre had his breakfast, and after that he went to a big chest and took out a couple of bags of gold. And down he sat and counted. At last his head began to rock, and he began to snore till the whole house shook again. Remember what I said about counting to make yourself sleepy? <laughs> then Jack crept out of the oven, grabbed a bag of gold, and was off before you could say, Jack Robinson. Now. Was that really the right thing to do for Jack? Was it right for him to steal a bag of gold? Not really, no. When Jack came to the beanstalk, he threw down the gold, which of course fell on his mother's into his mother's garden. Then Jack climbed down. Well, mother, he said, wasn't I right about the beans? They really are magical, you see. So they lived off the bag of gold for some time. But at last they came to the end of it, and Jack made up his mind to try his luck once more up at the top of the beanstalk. One fine morning he rose up early and jumped onto the beanstalk, and he climbed and he climbed and he climbed and he climbed, and he walked and he walked and he walked, till at last he came to the great big tall house he had been to before. There, sure enough, standing on the doorstep was the great big tall woman. There she is. Go away, my boy, said the big tall woman, or else my man will eat you up for breakfast. But aren't you the youngster who came here once before? Do you know that very day my man missed one of his bags of gold? That's strange, Mom, said Jack, hold bold as brass. I dare say I could tell you something about that, but I'm so hungry I can't speak till I've had something to eat. Well, the big tall woman was so curious that she took him in again. She's very smart. She's nice, at least. She's at least a little smart, but nice. It, she gave him food and hit him, right? All happened as it did before. Thump, thump, thump. They heard the ogre's footsteps, and his wife hid him, Jack away in the, in the oven. Fee, fi, fo, fum, the giant said again. After breakfast, the ogre said, Wife, bring me the hen that lays the golden eggs. So she brought it, and the ogre said, Lay, and it laid an egg of gold. Soon the ogre began to nod his head and to snore till the house shook. Then Jack tiptoed out of the oven, rubbed the golden hen, and off he peltered. That means dashed, ran away. Again, was it, was it right? Mm. But this time, the hen gave a cackle that woke the ogre. And just as Jack got out of the house, he heard him roaring, Wife! Wife! What have you done with my golden hen? When Jack got home, he showed his mother the wonderful hen and said, Lay to it! And it had a golden egg every time he said lay. Well, it wasn't very long before Jack decided once again to try his luck up there at the top of the beanstalk. I think maybe he was being a little bit greedy. This time he knew better than to go straight to the ogre's house. When the big tall woman came out with the pail, he crept into the house and got into the bread box. Are those bones? They are creepy. He hadn't been there long when he heard thump, thump, thump as before, and in came the ogre and his wife. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. I smell him, wife, I smell him. Do you, my dearie, said the ogre's wife. Well, if it's the little rogue that stole your gold and the hen, then he's sure to have got into the oven. Because that's where she hit him the two times before, right? They both rushed to the oven, but Jack wasn't there. And the ogre's wife said, 
There you go again with your fee fi fo fum Why, of course it's the boy you caught last night that I've just broiled for your breakfast, she said. How forgetful I am and how careless you are not to know the difference between live and dead after all these years. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> well, I could have sworn, muttered the ogre, and he searched the larder, that's the cupboard, and the, oh, the larder's not the, the refrigerator, kind of, and the cupboards and everything. Only luckily, he didn't think of the bread box. Do you have a bread box? I do, but it's too small for a boy. After his breakfast was over, oh, I forgot. The ogre has to have everything big, right? Because his bread would be big. He, the, the ogre called out, Wife, bring me my golden harp. So she brought it, and he said, Sing! And the golden harp sang most beautifully. I wish I could hear it. And it went on singing till the ogre fell asleep and began to snore like thunder. Then Jack lifted the lid very quietly and crept like a mouse on hands and knees till he came to the table and up he crawled and caught hold of the golden harp. What do you think's gonna happen? What do you think's gonna happen? But the harp called out, Master, master! And the ogre woke up. Uh-oh. Jack ran as fast as he could, and the ogre came rushing after. When the ogre saw Jack climbing down for dear life, he swung himself onto the beanstalk, which shook with his weight. Down climbed Jack, and after him climbed the ogre. Jack called out, Mother, mother, bring me an axe! Ooh, he's holding his knife in his teeth. He's gonna get that Jack. Jack's mother rushed out with an axe in her hand, and Jack gave a chop at the beanstalk, cutting it in two. The ogre fell down and broke his crown, and the beanstalk came tumbling after. And that's the end. And now they're quite rich, because they've got a golden a hen that lays a golden egg. They've got the harp that sings beautifully, but the ogre is no more. So that was a delightful delightful re retelling of the story. Now this by the way is published by M Morrow Junior Books and we're, ju we're reading this during the coronavirus and so I'm really thankful to the publishers that allow that. So we're going to talk about this. We're going to compare another uh, telling of this tomorrow and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.